Well, starting this, actually starting Friday, the end of the day Friday, I'm on vacation for the next week or so, which I'm certainly glad of that. It's been a long road, seven day weeks for months and months and months, probably about eight months. It's really good to get a little bit of time off. <clears throat> Rather than doing like everybody else does, just lay around on a beach or something stupid like that, I build things. So one of the things I'm going to do this vacation is build a good steel workbench, which is something that I've needed for quite a while. I had a heavy-duty wooden workbench that I used for quite a few years, actually a lot of years, probably 10 or 12 years, but it was just taking up too much space in my garage, so I cut it apart and got rid of it and I've been kind of working off these card table things and obviously they're pretty flimsy I can't do any beating or banging or certainly can't do any welding on them so I'm going to build myself a steel workbench um, using um, 2 by 2 square tubing 48 inches long 36 inches wide and about 30 inches tall, plus the thickness of the steel plate on top. That pretty, should be pretty much the perfect size. I can stand and work on it without having to bend over too far, but at the same time, if I need to, or if I want to sit in a chair and work, it's not gonna be way high for that either. Um, I'm gonna weld this thing together. I'm gonna, instead of just button these ends together, I'm gonna miter them makes it a little bit a little bit stronger and also makes it just a nicer finish to it and here's the uh, where the four legs will come up through I'll weld them right basically flush with this outer framework and then weld the top on it um, come to find out I haven't bought any raw materials in quite a while last few times I did I had enough to make about any of the projects I needed to make I bought one mill length which is 24 feet I had to cut it in half so I could carry it in my pickup truck of 2 by 2 by quarter inch wall thickness mild steel tubing and one 4 foot by 3 foot sheet of diamond plate which I didn't necessarily want diamond plate but they had this in the rack and they gave me a good deal for it so basically I just flip it over and use the flat side although when I set this down and weld it on that diamonds are going to kind of hold it up a little bit but I got it cheaper but anyways $220 for all the more that I bought here steel prices are outrageous Wow, so this doggone steel workbench is going to cost me 220 bucks. Now luckily, and this is like absolutely pure luck that I ended up making it this way. If you look down through here, I've got this laid out, each individual piece, where the cuts are. By the time this is said and done, the total wastage on this 24 foot piece of mild steel tubing will be one and one sixteenth of an inch. So I used every single bit of it. In fact, my last 30 inch leg is basically going to be a combination of the ends of this. And I'll have to cut an inch and a sixteenth off of one of these, or actually probably maybe just an inch because by the time I'm done cutting this, I'll lose some width there. I'll do, I'll lose that at every cut. So it's gonna, the dimensions will be slightly shorter than what I have listed here by maybe a sixteenth or thirty second but that's okay because it will all end up being that same way so it'll work just fine but basically this entire steel tube will go into that now, unfortunately it doesn't give me enough to put any cross braces here and along the back along the back side so I do have over in that corner there, I do have some 2x2 two two square tubing left over from another project. Back when I was making a project for my squat rack, 
that I can graft some of that in. But I just can't believe how expensive this was. $220. Wow. But anyways, this uh, if you look at the there's writing on this square tubing and there's a, a meaning to this writing. That A five hundred B that's the um, alloy grade. It's um it conforms to the ASTM standard A five hundred B, which basically is um, a cold formed um, seamless tubing that um, you have like an A five hundred A, A five hundred B, C, and D, I think, and each one of those have a different st <coughs> strength characteristic, and the amount of carbon contained in the A five hundred series um, classifies it as a mild steel as compared to a low steel or, or I mean a mild yeah a mild carbon steel as compared to a low carbon steel or a high carbon steel so it's kind of like in a mid-range this is pretty much like the standard structural tubing alloy for just about anything it doesn't require a huge amount of strength um, got the heat number on here which basically that's like the lot number I can't remember exactly what those numbers are I know part of it has to do with um, like the furnace number and what year that the steel was actually melted and so on and so forth and then of course you have the date code on here 22912 so it's fairly recent and then Made in USA, which really surprised me. I was kind of glad of that. So, anyways, probably tomorrow I'm going to cut this up and hopefully I won't make any mistakes. If I do, I'll be welding gaps rather than cutting new pieces. This stuff's too expensive to waste. So, this will be my next project. Oh, by the way, I'm going to cut this with my uh, handheld Milwaukee bandsaw which I use one of these at work fairly often cutting conduit and sometimes structural tubing and these are really nice I finally earlier in the spring finally paid the money for this it was I don't know about $299 I think kind of expensive but I budget for stuff like this and couple times a year I'll splurge on something I mean, heck I spend 70 to 80, hour, 80 hours a week at work I can splurge on a few things like this it'll make things a lot easier what I've been using previously was my DeWalt chop saw which works quite nicely but throws sparks everywhere and it's pretty messy I'll probably have to do the miter cuts with this so I'm not sure I'll be able to do it very accurately with by hand with a bandsaw. And also, in each one of these cut lines that I have laid out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a witness mark down the bottom here. That way I can, I'll actually, I have these scribe lines on here now, but I'll actually put a couple punch marks in here so I can fall a little bit easier. And with this witness line down here, perpendicular with the original layout line I'll end up being able to keep this tubing pretty square otherwise you have nothing to reference off of and with that bandsaw it's pretty easy if you're not careful to have that thing cutting like on an angle then you end up one piece too short and the other one too long so I'll probably do that tomorrow